Well, hello there, everybody. Thanks for coming back to the undeserved flavor. Cheers. <clears throat> well, I just recorded a tasty little video, but I misquoted the scripture in it, so I'm recording it over again because, you know, it's kind of nice to have the right verse, you know, to what you're talking about. I was driving and I didn't want to do this little thing while I was driving. Well, I'm parked now, so I can re-record the video really quick. But while I was uh, sitting here in this gas station parking lot looking up this verse with my old voice-to-text, you know, device, the Google Box, I uh, <clears throat> found something that expanded on my thought. Let's jump right into it. Before we do that, I'd like you to hit the like button. But you don't have to if you don't want to. It just, you know, it's pretty cool to see. I have more than one or two likes on my videos. Anyway, the point of today's video is that the God of the Old Testament isn't necessarily who we've been taught. And he's a lot better than, well, he's definitely a lot better than we've been taught. And universal salvation is more than alluded to in the Old Testament. Case in point, <clears throat> in Exodus, I think it's, well, I haven't looked it up yet. I looked up, I was on my way to looking it up, and I found something else, and that is what is up. I'll get to that in a second. Exodus 21.33. I'm going to go into the New American Standard Bible. America. Let's see. I think it was verse 33. Yeah. Exodus 21.33. Now, if y'all will remember... Exodus is the second book of the Bible, right after Genesis. Verse 33, now if someone opens a pit or digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls into it, the owner of the pit shall make restitution. He shall give money to its owner, and the dead animal shall become his. Um, let's see here. Who do you think was given these, uh, ordinances? Was it somebody who had no inspiration? It was Moses, I think. Doesn't matter. It's too early in the morning to think that deep. Um... God created Adam and Eve from the dust of the earth, breathed life into them, set them in a garden. In this garden, there was also a tree, the tree of life. But that's not the tree we're talking about today. God also dug a pit in the garden. I don't know if you all heard this part of the story. But I'm going to tell you, he dug a pit in the garden. And one day, little old Eve was hopping and skipping and jumping through the garden and whoop, slipped, fell into the pit. She must not have saw it. Well, Adam came along hopping and skipping and looking for his old wifey poo. And he fell into the pit too. You know, she was like, Help me, help me. And he heard it, and he was looking around, and then, boom, he fell into the pit. Now they're stuck in this pit. I, I'm pretty sure this is all biblical. You can look it up. But, uh, oh, wait, no, that's not what it says. It says God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
And he told them, if you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Or when you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Like I said, look it up. Don't ever quote me, but that doesn't matter anyway. The point is, God put the tree there. God dug the pit. And then one book later, probably multiple thousands of years in reality, but God gave an ordinance through his servant Moses. If a man digs a pit and his neighbor's ox falls into it, who's responsible for the neighbor's ox or the restitution? The man who dug the pit. So it seems to me that God is responsible for the fall of Adam and Eve. And if you don't believe me, let's go over to, oh, I don't know, Proverbs, I think it is. Yeah, Proverbs 26, 27. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. Where else do we hear a story about a stone being rolled over a tomb, maybe? And then being rolled away. Well, yeah. Coincidence? Maybe. Maybe it's just too early in the morning and I need to finish drinking my coffee. All right, it's all gone now. Three more cups and I'll be thinking straight. Get what I'm saying here? If you don't, I'm just gonna break it down. God created Adam and Eve. God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, AKA he dug the pit that they fell into because Adam and Eve, you know, were around for thousands of years and had infinite knowledge and wisdom and knew not to disobey God, knew to trust him, um, you know, so they wouldn't uh, succumb to the uh, truth of what God told them, and that is death. Well, God dug the pit, and then God gave the ordinance that, you know, whoever digs the pit is responsible for the restitution of restoring whatever fell into the pit. In the case of Exodus, way back in the day, it was an ox or a donkey. But the point is, God is responsible for you and me and everyone else. If, in fact, we are in Adam. I know not all of us are necessarily like literally the blood of Abraham, you know, the... Uh, descendants of Israel. I know in the New Testament, Paul says there's no longer Jew or Gentile. And uh, somewhere in there he says, or somewhere in the New Testament, we're told that, yeah, I think it's in Hebrews, by faith we are children of Abraham. So, yeah, that's there somewhere, but that's not really relevant um, to what I'm saying here. But we're in Adam, as all human beings are, race and creed and ethnicity and wherever you come from, we're all in Adam. Nobody on the planet, according to, you know, Christian doctrine and teaching, all of humanity originates in Adam. And in the Bible, all have fallen short, all have fallen in the pit, a.k.a. In Adam all die, and in Christ all shall be made alive. Okay, so in Adam, everyone fell in the pit. God created the pit. God put the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in there, and then God gave the ordinance that you know, whoever creates or digs a pit is responsible to take care of it. And then, like I said, while I was 
oh, looking into that scripture because originally I'm like, it's somewhere in Leviticus or Deuteronomy. Well, there might be something in there too, but I was actually wrong when I was thinking that. It's actually Exodus, so further back. Um, but then when I was looking up that scripture, I found the proverb it says, whoever digs a pit will fall into it. And that's funny because God actually came in the form of his son, Jesus, to dwell with us, to experience humanity in the flesh. And that's kind of alluded, no, not alluded to, it's like allegorical, I guess is the right word here. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. Well, God created Adam and Eve, then he put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in there, in the garden that they were set in, not that they found themselves. And then they ate of the tree, which they were told not to, yeah, but, you know, they were still kind of like dumb little animals. They hadn't exactly been around for too long. It's kind of like, you know, tell your three-year-old not to put their hand on the stove while it's hot because you'll get burned. What happens? The three-year-old waits till mom and dad aren't looking and puts their hand on the stove. We've all been there. Well, maybe not all of us. Maybe you're smarter than me, but I was there. My brother was there. I know a lot of other people who did that exact same thing. Um, same thing with like curling irons and whatever. Anyway, so do I go burn in hell forever? Never, 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 never. Because I didn't darken the doors of your particular church one day and say your magical little prayer. Oh, Jesus, please come into my heart and magically be my personal Lord and Savior. Oh, no. Now I got to go through your deliverance ministry. I need to be exercised because I have a mocking spirit. Maybe you just need to jump on out of that cult you're in and open your eyes. All right, I'm going to digress. This video was supposed to be like three minutes long and it's already 12. I'm gonna wrap it up here. The God of the Old Testament, which is also the God of the New Testament, believe it or not, even though it was human beings, ancient human beings, who wrote the Old Testament, projected their ideas of God onto the stone and the scribe, scribal parchment. Did they have parchment back then? I don't know, thousands of years after they had a verbal tradition. Anyway, wow, I'm going on a rabbit trail. So, yeah, the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, same God, same God created everything. God dug the pit. God wrote the ordinance. Whoever digs the pit shall be responsible for it, We're responsible for what fell in, storing that was lost. And then... Proverbs, little old Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, said, whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. Well, I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean, I will admit. Whoever rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. I think it's implying some evil person rolling a stone to trip up or harm a not evil person. And then kind of like karma coming back around, the stone ends up falling on himself. It's a bad dude. Well, anyway, if you can open your eyes and see some of the, uh, the allegory or the shadows here in the Old Testament of what came about in the New Testament. Notice I'm not using the word covenant here. 
talking about the way the Bible was written, Testament, Old Testament, New Testament, obviously speaking to Christian folk. Anyway, I think you uh, got my point. I hope you got my point. If you didn't get my point, maybe watch the video again and think about it some more. God dug the pit. Man fell into it. Later, God said, whoever digs a pit is responsible to save or restore that which fell into the pit. Pretty, pretty clear. Universal salvation in the Old Testament. Who would have thought? <clears throat> I vaguely am remembering having something else I wanted to say in this video. But uh, we're going to leave it right there because we're 15 minutes in. Tell me what you think in the comments. Maybe you got something to add to what I had to say here. But in the meantime, taste and see that the Lord is good. Have a good one.